Somebody has to, Arthur. Ooh, that hurts. I guess someone <laughs> does have to be upbeat and entertaining, Ryan. And if it's not you or me, God knows who it's going to be. I mean, well, these other two guys. I mean, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's not I'm sure it ain't gonna be me. Let's, let's get that straight. We're gonna James. have James lift the whole episode. Yeah, you got it's all on your shoulders, buddy. <laughs> what an incredible intro to Battletech Blades of Honor Season 1, Episode 17, set in the year 3046. Uh, by popular request, I have used the power of OBS to lift myself and Andrew up so that our chins now clear our, uh, our name tags beneath us. So even though I like to hide in this corner for reasons that aren't apparent to me, I just, this is how I sit normally. Now when I'm sitting with my spine the way it's supposed to be, you will be able to see the bottom part of my face. I didn't even know that was a complaint. Uh, yeah. Yeah, someone was just like, hey, could you do this? And I was like, yeah, it's inconsequential. It'll take me about 20 seconds to fix it. Sure. You, you, you must you must miss having like a GM screen where you can be like the Wilson of tabletop games. <laughs> ah, Wilson, <laughs> what a what a reference, what a pull. Right? Oh, I gotta be honest, Rad. Some of our uh, James, some of my audience isn't gonna get that one. Wow, man, yeah, what a bummer. not that I have a lot yeah. of youth in the uh, in the audience, but some, but some. Not and not it, that I think it probably aged well, and I would wouldn't recommend people go back and watch it. But what a what an era, what a time to be alive that was. <laughs> Uh, if only there were some way to hide my face, but to keep my expressions intact, like some sort of virtual avatar I could put <laughs> over top of myself if I felt self-conscious. If only I had such a capability. That would be wild. Previously on this show, the show we are currently on and talking about <laughs> and not getting distracted from, you landed on the planet of Lushan 8, which is a wonderful little world that is democratic kind of you met with representative thalia schutz who asked you to intervene in a slight union negotiation problem she had uh she was hoping that you would be kind of a third party neutral arbiter that would help settle things in a way that would benefit one of her major contributors you know very neutral you also have an outstanding invitation to speak with section leader Kai Schwimmer of the local Alliance Grenadiers. And there is a ball being held in your honor that you asked nothing about and apparently have no cares to attend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely got sidetracked on that one. So, well, we, threw, we, we got kicked out when we asked uncomfortable questions. That's true. Much, so, yeah. <laughs> but that was at Representative Thalia Schutz's house, not the ball. That's true. But but wasn't wasn't she going to host the ball? No, the ball oh, okay. is being hosted on behalf of the planet. Okay. So as a oh, reminder, hey. she's like a federal representative. Uh, she goes to the executive parliament of the whole Outlands Alliance. Sorry, is it Outworlds? I swear, Mortal Kombat has ruined me on this one. <laughs> it's Outworlds Alliance, not Outlands. Right. I get it wrong so but often. So she works for Shang, for Shang Tsung directly, does she? Yeah, she works for <laughs> no. Shang Tsung directly. And you, what you need, you need to talk to Raiden, who is the governor of this world. Yeah. But it's trying to meet their souls quota. <laughs> they just have to win Mortal Kombat 10 times in order to claim a new planet. Yeah. You tell me what you'd like to do. You have been ushered out of the meeting with your doggy bags of roti full rotisserie chicken. Speaking of which, that soup I made with my rotisserie chicken last week was magnifique. I gotta here. tell you, you put some uh, you put some cucumber, put some carrots and celery in the pot, and then you add some gochujang, filter all that stuff out, and you got like a nice spicy red chicken stock sauce that you can just drink directly like a warm soup. Did we at least get some um, dinner rolls to go with it? Yes, yeah. the dinner rolls were packaged up with little right. pads of premium local butter, which is nowhere near as good as the butter you get from Valentina. Oh, man. What, did, what do you... Darn. Hold on. This is a... The premium butter. This is an ice ball planet. Where <laughs> do you think they're getting fresh butter from? I don't know. Compared don't to a nice temperate insect work. milk. I'm a noble. Insect I don't care. Milk. I don't care how it what happens. Is it? It just needs to happen. Snow piercer? <laughs> 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 I was a demolition man where he's like, oh, I love this burger. It's like, do you see any cows down here? Yeah. 
Well, raising listen, questions. Man. The question <laughs> I'm asking is, where do you want to be right now with your police escort driving you where you want to go? I feel like this happens in character in the police escort. Wait, when was this ball? Wasn't there a ball? We didn't even talk about the ball. Oh, so yeah, the police officer who's driving you around says, oh yes, the, there's a ball being held in your honor. Uh, it's later today. Oh, can you can you take us somewhere where we can buy some fa like local fashion? So we can show up looking looking good. He turns and he looks directly at Akari Genji, and then he turns and goes back and says, "No, you're good. Okay, <laughs> you guys are good." <laughs> oh my goodness! Local fashion. You guys showed Local up fashion. in like nice clothes. This we're is a like backwater the... <laughs> mining outpost. <laughs> Our local fashion is we're dressed like the Water Tribe from Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that makes more sense than you would think. Because they want to have the ripped arms look because most of the population is miners. Um, Alright, so... Because <laughs> the, 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 the problems at this particular um, mine are... To, uh, part of the industrial concern yeah like the the, the company the Luchan company of which industrials limited yeah should we look to go and see them to find out a bit more about their side of the story before we go and see the the um institute the the, uh, the union so we're supposed to go and arbitrate is there a scheduled event we're supposed to arbitrate or you are we are supposed the, to show up as the arbitrators like, it's your job to figure this arbitration out. time bitch okay all right yeah. You neutral third party arbitration. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, so then your driver yeah, gestures to you that like he knows where to go if you want to have a discussion with some higher ups at Lucian Industrials Limited. All right. All right. Yeah, let's go that way. But he starts driving you there. Uh it is quite late at the local evening time when you arrive, and the security guard has a discussion with your driver before waving you through. The compound is one of those, it looks nearly Soviet in construction, like a lot of concrete, no windows, stark, where you drive up, you know, there's a loading space for vehicles, and then there's an unloading space for VIP passengers, and then a massive concrete, like, hey, park in this giant pillar of cars that are all packed together. It, since, uh, since, we, since we got here late. I wanted to <laughs> imagine that we turn up and they're like, oh no, he went home today. He's gone to the ball. You're supposed to be. He's at right the now. ball. <laughs> <laughs> he I is here. We missed the ball. He, he, he is not only ball. here. By the time you make it around the roundabout and are being, sh you know, at like the shuttle drop off point, there is a man waiting to see you who's wearing a fedora, a overcoat over top of a black silk suit with good Ouch. dress pants and uh you know shining shoes and a cane who's standing there as the door opens and the police officer is helping you all get out he says my name is mr falco holtz i am the sole proprietor of lushan industrials limited i understand you wanted to talk to me i was just cleaning up for the day preparing to go to the ball that is in your honor a ball where I'd hope to speak directly with you about several concerns, but it would seem you have been co-opted by Miss Schutz. Well, perhaps we could ride to the ball together and we could have a conversation on the way. Would that be convenient for you? We will take my private hover car. Excellent. No one oh, said so. Right before you say excellent, he turns to the police officer and says, you may go now. Please leave my campus. <laughs> I, uh, Out I, of turn, character. I turn and just like throw some dollar bills at them, which just like land on the floor now, as a tip. I, I want to be officers. very clear. Is this C bills or is it Draconis Combine bills? It's absolutely Draconis Combine okay, bills. Okay, you throw him some K bills and he's like, I can't spend this anywhere. I'm already getting in the car. Like I do not give a shit what he does with them. <laughs> He's like, damn, um, I'm going to have to go to the HPG to get my currency converted. It's going to cost more to exchange this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
out of character, I was going to suggest the same thing James suggested that we talk in the car. Uh, in character, Siegfried is like, if I have to get in one more goddamn car today. You do not get in a car. Uh, what you get in is a hovercraft version of oh, a dinosaur. stretch Escalade oh, okay. with a built-in bar. I got you. This this and isn't a, a car. This is an experience. <laughs> it is an experience when you get in. So there is a special seat in the back that has Holtz's name on it. And the seat has like overly plush arm rests and like a, a sound system that comes up. Like he goes in and you hear something go like, recognize Mr. Falco Holtz, communication system active. You have a throne. 2,176 messages. And he's like, delete them all. Forward <laughs> anything relevant to my secretary. Thank you, computer. Deactivate for the night. He's, um, what's his name? That, uh, from, from the Mandalorian. Um, yeah. Werner Herzog. Werner Herzog, yeah. 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 <laughs> Please uh, sit wherever you would like. Perhaps you would like to enjoy some refreshments. A pre-mixed margarita, a pre-mixed Long Island iced tea, perhaps the finest bottle of whiskey on the planet, a 20-year-aged Davian. Is he already sitting in his chair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I would have sat in his chair if he wasn't already sitting there. I will <laughs> allow you to make a roll to see if you want to snipe this <laughs> he said, chair. He said, sit wherever you want. <laughs> yes. He's, he said that when he was sitting in his chair, though. <laughs> Not good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you went for the chair and he bodily like body slammed you out of yeah, the way yeah. to flop down in it. My apologies, Mr. Kari Genji. I did not see you there. Such is the existential problems of life that we are not always certain where all things are located at all times. With perfect knowledge, we could solve all things, even the entropy of the universe. Sorry, Herr Holtz, you already know our names then? Mr. Holtz is fine. Yes, I know who all of you are. Lord Kaeda, Lord Arneson, Miss Genji. So I believe you know that we're working as arbitrators? Yes, my staff has been informed that you will be interfacing between myself and the union. From your initial in indication, it sounded like you were not keen on the fact that we'd already spoken with the governess or another representative. Do you, do you have a different side to the affairs that she has outlined to us? Of course I have a different side. I represent the majority of workers on the planet, good, hardworking men and women, keep their heads down and do not make trouble. Brad, this is going to be an incredible night for you. I'm just going to tell you that. It's so good. Have, I'm already having such a great that, time. That this storyline was written like a solid two months ago. <laughs> I love that. I love everything about this so far. I, already, okay. I can't even specify what it is I love. My job as a creator of jobs is to continue creating jobs. When my hands are tied, I can no longer create jobs. Sure, it would improve people's life quality if I were to pay them more or provide them with whatever incidentals they want. But in such a case, others will go unemployed. Is quality of life truly so foundational that the employment of others must come first? Should I not look forward to having a close to zero unemployment rate on this, the planet that I live People are so willing to take and take and take from my pockets when I am trying to give, give back to this world that my family has built. Sorry, I got a little overly emotional there. I'm normally a very calm and rational person. I well, would you seem have out. asked for you to get involved in my side of things. I am concerned about the actions of these union representatives. They are holding my machines hostage against me. I own that equipment, not them, and I would have it recovered into my hands. 
but as you are now a third-party arbitrator, it becomes problematic to ask you to also act in this manner. I must make clear that my assets will be recovered one way or another. Sorry, I occasionally have a very dramatic way of speaking. And for oh, some I reason, we I occasionally specifically not to harm your assets. Yes, I would. I do not want my assets harmed. But to be extremely clear, I would rather see my assets harmed and back in my hands than to see them in the hands of people who do not deserve nor have paid for them. What resources do you have to reclaim your own assets? If you don't want us involved, how are you going to do it yourself? He takes a deep breath and looks out the side of the vehicle, like out one of the tinted windows, pours himself a pre-made margarita mix, sloshes it around, and then needs salt on the rim. He turns back to look at you with a sour look on his face and says, My resources in terms of internal security disputes are limited. I do not maintain a large policing force. Such a thing is a waste of resources. Normally, I would rely upon the local police to do such a thing, but they have said that they will not get involved in an internal labor dispute. So then you don't have a way to solve this problem yourself. There are other manners of solutions, ones that I have not availed myself to because they will require a large amount of resources to be deployed. But it should be clear that if I am forced to take desperate measures, there are some cards left on the table. Is this situation with the unions, in your mind, a zero-sum game? Or is there a win-win available? I do not think in such terms. In the end, what there is, is Lushan Industries Limited. It is the planet. It can only win. Out of character, <clears throat> did the the governess, did she... Not a government. Give us an representative. Council, representative. 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 Yeah. Did she give us an indication as to what side she wants to see on top? Yes, just, on this guy's side. On this guy's side, like for sure, right? Now, just to be clear, your official diplomatic stance is that you are a third party neutral arbiter, and she is right. asking you under and frankly over the table to side with this guy. But if you do your job correctly, it's not like anyone can be like, well, it's not like they didn't do exactly what we asked for. What was this guy's name again? His name is Mr. Falco Holtz, and I will... Mr. Holtz. Mr. Holtz. Is, um, you typecasting my characters again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've even started leaning into it by accident. <laughs> I feel like uh, he's more... Um... I don't remember the character's name. The producers, the new, the new version of producers, Will Ferrell. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, I, know, I know, but I haven't seen it though. Okay. So. Oh man, it's a, it's my favorite <laughs> musical, probably. Yeah, I, I've, 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 I've only seen it as a musical in on stage. So, oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. You gotta watch the movie Nathan Lane and uh, Matthew Broderick. So good. Uh, so, okay. Uh, Go ahead. Yes, I got some. Let me say, uh, well, Mr. is Holtz, right? I don't just ask his name. Mr. Holtz. Okay. Uh, Mr. Holtz, you seem like a, like a well-educated man. So I'm, I'm more liable to, or likely to believe what you have to say than some uneducated, uh, union pups. But, uh, I think in the, I want to, I want to like, tell him that like we're gonna we're gonna do our base to make it look like we're we're trying to play fair but but kind of like imply that that we're kind of on his like at least i'm on on the same page as him hmm. do i want this to be a rule okay i i don't think so because i don't know what failure would look like 
you know, if you failed, would it just be that he doesn't understand that you are implying that you will be corrupt in his direction? You know what I mean? Like, I I don't think this will be a role. I think he will simply nod and go, ah, yes, this is very interesting. So your primary want out of this is the return of your equipment undamaged to your control. I would prefer that everyone gets back to work immediately. Do they, I mean, the work though involves the use of that equipment though, correct? That is correct. So in in what way would control of it be returned to you if if the if the workers need to continue interacting with it to to do their jobs how like what 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 has been taken from you right now that you need to get back the workers are possessing my industrial mechs and are not working this is a violation of their contract Have they made any demands of you so far? Have they, have they asked for anything? Yes, they have. They have asked for very ridiculous things. Do you have a list like of those things we can we can peruse? More than two weeks of PTO. <laughs> <laughs> so he leans back and uh, double taps his elbow on one of the armchairs and like a full keyboard swings out from underneath it and he pulls it in and then nestles it up against himself until it's like perfectly where he wants to be and then starts typing and then pulls down a little like computer eye screen hey listen this He's is like, this is 9, 000? Does he battle say tech. over 9000 arthur this is hey this is right out of the battle tech <laughs> anime believe you. cartoon i 100% believe you <laughs> His... Does he have a Nintendo Power Glove on too? Oh yeah, he puts the Nintendo <laughs> Power Glove on his right hand, so he's typing left-handed yeah. and then power gloving things. I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure in BattleTech it's a computer. It's a note pewter in BattleTech. Uh, yeah, no, the whole car yeah. is his note pewter though. He's currently yeah, virtually nice. interacting with it. I refer to you the case of Anastasius Fox via v. Sandhurst College. Starts net running right in front of us. Yeah, he's net running a <laughs> computer storage, note yeah. computer storage within yeah. his vehicle. His I'm Apple hacking tube. into the system. We hear, we, we hear modem sounds. Uh, <laughs> I'm in. That's what he says. <laughs> what you do he just, here... He just opens his mouth in a dial-up <laughs> the, the dial <laughs> handshake. Is next to his right elbow, uh, the... Where the top of the freezer is covered by a sudden pop out of a black box, and the black box begins making dot matrix printer noises as he tears off a sheet that indicates some of the demands that the union has made of him, which include uh, schooling for all children and all u union members so that they can raise the local literacy level, which is at a dismal 40% planet-wide. Uh, which... I mean, obviously, they're, they're, I was correct. They're uneducated. They don't know what's best for them. <laughs> they want Leave me alone, Kat. <laughs> tradesmen at training in the industrial mix that they have. So, like, they want official piloting licenses that they can take to other jobs if they need be, or put on a resume, something like that. Instead, they're being forced to Oh my God, Rat! It's... I'm so sorry. They're forced to learn these things on the job. They're you. They're using <laughs> multi-million-dollar machines. I wrote this two months ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> using multi-million-dollar machines without the proper licensing and training, and are being forced to learn from each other rather than get official education. Um, they want profit sharing. Uh, that the majority of profits are instead being moved into management's pockets without the workers seeing a percentage of uh, their work, which would imply that their work, they, they aren't seeing the value of what they get. Like, if they work harder, they get nothing for it. Um, they're also looking for a safer workplace, which will include 
because there is no workplace safety federal initiative within the out worlds Worlds. alliance out worlds alliance that they would like uh the union to provide safety officers and regular inspections and they'd also like benefits like improved health insurance but also vision and dental which they don't currently have and they want to provide anonymous uh God, James. I was just thinking that. I was trying to figure out a way to work that line into the episode <laughs> at some point tonight. They want to provide anonymous feedback through the union about officers of management who have been placed above them without the risk of them losing their jobs or speaking out against the powerful. As you can see, these demands are basically non starters. It would require a large amount of money to funnel all of this and also, I just don't feel like it. I mean, why? If the system works, why should we rock the boat here? It worked for my father and his father before him. This company has been working for an incredibly long amount of time. We are providing salasus that the entire intersphere wishes to use. Salasus. <clears throat> I, I know exactly how it handled this negotiation, but it's not something that Hero's going to come up with. <laughs> I'll tell you, Akari wants to assassinate this man and burn his house to the ground. But uh, that, well, okay, no, that's what Rad would do. But she's she's a Draconis combine through and through, right? To her, everything he's saying probably sounds about right. She, right? She's like, yeah, obviously these people just need to fucking get with the program and like do their jobs, right? But I'm sorry, yeah, I'm the same experiencing page consternation. <laughs> oh, man. We wrote this months ago. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> you all seem like you are deep in thought after my revelations and passing around this paper. Perhaps you would like to chase it down with some pre-made margarita mix. Uh, Kari is definitely already drinking. She's, <laughs> she's mixed herself a drink probably at this point. <laughs> Um, what can shots. you tell us about uh, <laughs> what? this? <laughs> yeah. What can you tell us about this union uh, leader that opposes you? Ah, it's the leader of the union, Gustavo Coimbra. He is a local rabble rouser who managed to trick fine people. Uh... Oh my god, I'm gonna mess this up. Blue collars, the regular workers, and white collars, the Management. Mm. Blue, blue, yeah, blue, blue collar producers, white collar managers. Yes. Yeah. Is a blue collar. He manages to prance around like that. He's a former middle manager. I had my eye on him for a long time as a possible executive vice president of the mining division, but it is clear that he's no longer management material now that he has gone union. He and his assistant, Andrea Pires have convinced people that literacy is a huge problem for them and that they need to do more in order to learn things. From there, it was very downhill scope into organizing the union, putting an official vote in, harassing what they called scab workers, those who simply wish to come to work, keep their head down and do their job correctly. Those are better days. Uh, how malleable do you think his assistant would be? His if, assistant? Say, if, say, like, you were to offer her a promotion, ah. do you think she would she would swing over to, to her way Her father of died in an unfortunate mining accident several years ago. She blames me entirely for her father's death. How many people would it take to cross the line for this union movement to fall over? I'm not certain. They have been stalwart with each other so far. All right. If, worst case scenario, if nothing, if we if we were not here and this couldn't be resolved and you had to deploy the resource you don't want to deploy in order to, in order to sort this out, what sort of cost would that have? Nebu- just give me a nebulous figure. Oh, probably... 10 to 15 million C-bills in order to get a group of 
little more than bandits, local rabble rouser mercenaries uh, to deploy into the local area. So if there is a cost, any cost less than 10 million, between zero and 10 million, if you recover your hardware, is a step up from what you're currently faced with. Yes, that is correct. You have correctly ascertained the situation in a sort of executive cost-benefit breakdown. I congratulate you on your perspicacity. How many staff are involved in this? In how many how many people are we talking about? Well over 2,000 union members. They are not all located at that particular compound. It's mostly the industrial mech workers, their union representatives and families. But the entire union claims to all stand behind their protesting. And what? the rest of the union members can come into work knowing that there are no minerals to process and no longer any lasers to make because of that. What um uh what what's the average salary of one of these of one of these workers? He pulls out like his little salary book work. So know that a uh a sergeant or private level mech warrior with a skill yeah. rating of four or five has a yearly payment in battle tech of about 40,000 C bills. So he tells mm -hmm. you 17,500 C bills for a skilled industrial mech pilot. Now, when you say a private, that's not a mech warrior. Yes, that's like a, a, no, no, a mech warrior who a is mech like warrior. a private sergeant, corporal. Okay. Like they're all paid roughly like 40,000 ish. That's the yearly pay for like a military or a bad mercenary. Okay. At like the mo at four or five is like the most basic regular level. All right. I have a lot of, I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> I'm <laughs> deeply worried the way you said that, but okay. <laughs> They're all bad. Yeah, I, um, I think I think when we discuss our ideas in 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 solitude at some point after this yes. all happens, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All I know is that we have a ship that can take a lot of people, you know, with us. This could be a, a really willing labor force here that might be willing to start a new life yeah. in a new place. So now how much I can have getting a unionized labor force to want to move <laughs> to the Dakota's combine. <laughs> I don't know. You could offer them twice as much and they'd still be underpaid. So your plan is to screw this guy over and take the most capable workers back to the inner sphere. Yeah. We're going to take all the skilled workers and we're just going to leave. I assure you that will solve some problems and probably turn the entire Outworlds Alliance against you. No, my other idea is, is both better and has worse potential outcomes, which I which I like better. And let's be really clear here. The mule is not the biggest dropship that's ever been made. It sure, can sure, sure. carry mm -hmm. hundreds of people. Frankly, I, I don't know how threatening I find the Outworlds Alliance, and I find them even less threatening when they've got no medium lasers. <laughs> <laughs> they also make small and large lasers here, okay? <laughs> okay, all right. It is mostly medium, though, and they mostly sell them to the Davians rather than internally. I, uh, okay. Okay. I want to meet with this, uh, what's uh, Gustavo? What's uh, the, I will, uh, can yeah. you put the name in the yes, thing? Yes, I will. It's a female? Uh, the, the union I'm... rep is a, a guy and his oh, okay. aide is a woman. Okay. 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 So. Gustavo Coimba. Coimbra. So the Outworlds Alliance is nominally Portuguese Brazilian. Okay. So uh, these, you know, the union members are mostly Portuguese, and it should not be surprising that the upper crust are all Germanic. It's a yeah. non-subtle colonialism. I want to negotiate with this person. Okay. Well, he will not be attending the party. Oh, he won't. To this ball? No. He's no, currently no, he's... on strike, protesting. I mean, you're on strike. You're not going to work. What else yeah, you got to okay, do? He's on know? strike. He's a union member. It, do you think union members get invited to the upper crust society? Can I send them a message and invite them oh to the ball? Oh, my God. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it is in our honor. 
<laughs> You've been cordially invited by none other than Akari Genji. I love this. I w- <laughs> we're gonna have this conversation. First off, are you calling while you're in this guy's vehicle? Oh, you're no. sending it via text. I'm sending a message. Yeah, oh, I'm sending him a text. Okay. Okay. I will take a roll and I'll take it at a minus one because it's you know you're sending a text message and there are all sorts of. Oh, what I, I guess I would have a better shot if I called, wouldn't I? Yes. Um. No, I already said I'd send a text. Somebody then. Okay, so it'll be whatever passes for persuasion, both, charisma, both to him and his aide. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna expert reroll this. Using your think... one. Once an hour reroll. Once an hour. For the folks at home, that was a three and a one originally. Oh! oh so much better. Okay, okay. What's your total with the minus one? I don't know that I have. Again, I don't have it open. I never have it open, but I think I, I, it's either flat or with a one. You have persuade plus one. Okay. Uh, and then so it I... goes off charisma, so yeah, but you have plus one total. Okay. Oh, so, so it, ten it total. Mm-hmm. Okay. You get a message back from Union Representative. Gustavo Coimbra, uh, which says, I and my aide would be more than willing to see you. Please mark us down as your plus twos. We will be there within two hours. I assume uh, workman's attire is allowed. Um, what's the time frame here? Well, it was going to start in like 10 minutes, but they're willing okay. to postpone it. I mean, if, if they show like... up like fashionably late, yeah. that's fine. Sure. I feel like I probably have brought like a pretty robust um, like attire with me. It seems like something a noble would travel with. Sure. Can I have somebody meet them like outside the ball with like with like house Genji like oh. garb? Yeah, listen, I was gonna... This is a was... this is a real yeah, that... fucking hard play. Okay. Yeah, it won't, it won't, it won't feel okay, very, no, wait, uh, no, I don't want to do that. Very, I, um, do that. I was, was, was going to say, Red, do we just want to like phone up like a like a men's warehouse and tell them to go get <laughs> yeah, a suit yeah, real yeah. quick? That's a way better we'll, idea. And we'll, we'll yeah. pay for it. That's a much better idea. We'll have somebody meet phone them a outfits. men's warehouse after hours. Yeah. Have a suit ready for two people nobles? whose measurements you don't know. Listen. Now, look, the only reason I'm going to say yes to this is because you are nobles on a backwater <laughs> planet and your money is hard currency that spends real real good here there you go so y- years ago i was involved in <laughs> selling a secure security system to a sewage treatment plant still government run but a sewage plant and uh the when, when it was all went to tender and when they water the tender they they have to because of government organization call in all the failed bidders and tell them why they failed to win the tender uh Ooh. pricing whatever that's something and uh in one of those meetings the guy from the sewage plant who was uh holding the meeting was drinking coffee out of a mug with my company's logo on it and that co- and, and the, the people he was talking to complained and there was a you know, corruption investigation and he was fired from the from the government for, for you know drinking coffee out of a mug with, with my company's name on it after telling other people that we got the tender that's funny <laughs> wow <laughs> It's incredible. Yeah. What I can know, I how, say? How stupid people are sometimes. <laughs> hey. uh, Kari Eganji was about to be one of those stupid people. Listen, <laughs> luckily, you go into a doctor's Ooh. office and they're like, "Why not try paraffinamol?" <laughs> Yeah. You know, they have a pen that's just like, here, take this pen for this drug. Yeah, the you doctor's don't wearing need. a paraffinamol <laughs> shirt. Yeah, <laughs> you could get the generic version of for much cheaper, but if you get this specific version, yeah. it will I make the people pens. who send me to these meetings yeah. happy. The license plate on his Lamborghini is like a you know abbreviation of the medication that he's just prescribed <laughs> you. Uh, what's the men's erection pill? Viagra. How did I? How did it take me so long to come up with that one? In in the same way, like I don't know. I'm sure you've seen The Hangover, right? Where they're on their way to the <sighs> wedding at the end, and the van pulls up beside them and like throws them tuxedos, like while they're driving sixty miles down the street i'm pretty sure we can arrange to have somebody beat them and throw the throw them into some you some, know a rat just for you just gowns. because you wanted to bring the comedy back we have that scene where like <laughs> yeah. gustavo coimbra is like hanging out the side of a white panel van he's like throw me the suit <laughs> yeah. and there's like a men's warehouse employee who's surfing on the top of their vehicle yeah. who's like i can't throw it i'll have to come over there <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, they have a tailor that's just like, you know, <laughs> jockey size with like a with a bag. They just throw over there so he can hem like the sleeves and the pants real quick. There's a dude sitting in the back of a truck operating a sewing machine. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. On the way to the ball. I want to imagine that the overland road between the mining facility and this desolate, icy hellscape to get to the capital is just the two of these vehicles driving side by side for miles. Well, I imagine, yeah. I imagine the suits are like the sneakers from Back to the Future 2, where he just pushes the button and it fits no, to him. You know what I mean? Like, no. it's future 80s. The Back to the Future 2 is future it's... 80s. Like, the I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Is everything sucks. Yeah, like, boards, here, stupid this, haircuts. A computer this size can have 32 gigabytes of hard drive space. And I'm like, Whoa, okay, calm down. there you go. <laughs> yeah. That's the newest technology in the 3040s. Not even play Baldur's Gate 3 on that. <laughs> Play Skyrim. Hey, not RAM. That's its hard drive space. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's yeah. what I did. So, uh, it doesn't Baldur's even come with a graphics 32. processor. Back when RAM was measured in KB, baby. Oh, boy. Hey, I remember when that guy was like, we're never going to need more than one megabyte of RAM. And I was like, that's yeah. a rough one to stake your industry reputation on, buddy. <laughs> this man's never met Google Chrome, for sure. I, I remember upgrading my Apple IIe from 64K to 128K of RAM. And the, the plug-in module was about this size and weighed about four pounds. I'm not quite that bad, but I remember going from a power supply. Pentium 2 to a Pentium 4. What oh, we were blazing, man. Double clock speed processor. I just the remember turbo, playing the turbo like, button on the outside of the case. <laughs> playing like Goldeneye on the Nintendo 64 and been like, I don't know that they could ever even make graphics better than this. This is incredible. Sure. And then they made perfect dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the pinnacle of entertainment technology. After a amount of time, Gustavo Coimbra and Andrea Pires will show up, but you with Falco Holtz show up first, and you are all announced together going in together, which definitely causes something of a scandal with the press. Like, ah, the neutral third party arbiters are. We came to the party with the rich industrialists and go in together with him. Don't now, worry, I'll be evening that what, out. Shortly. Yeah, I, know. I think <laughs> I, I told this guy I want us to appear neutral, so I think I'd let him go in first and then show up like a couple minutes later. I, sure. I, I like I, I like the idea of doing what because if, if we appear to go one side, then suddenly we appear to go the other side. You know, whereas if we don't go with him, we appear to be preferencing the unions because we invited the unions. But if we walk in with him right. yeah. and we invited the unions, it it, it yeah levels out. Exactly. Definitely that's, makes for a much more dramatic press works. article. Yes, because <laughs> rather than bouncing out, you just seem corrupt in both Extreme, directions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Looking for the most hands and exchanging envelopes. Yeah. Now, yeah. Provi pro provided we've been bribed the same amount by both parties, it's okay. <clears throat> so, Siegfried, do you still want to go in later than the rest of the party and just hang out for a minute? No, I mean, I'll walk in with my, uh, my compatriots. Okay. When they walk in, I walk in. Now, for... House K8 and House Arneson. It's a big party. There's a, a lot of people, probably a hundred rich industrialists, politicians, top corporate like uh, entertainment people. You know what passes for like a local singing group, pop star. Uh, for you, Akari Genji. For you, your eyes center on one man standing in a ring of other people. He clearly has the sword of house takamori on him he's using it as a walking stick and is telling a hilarious story that his art his back is arched laughing and everybody else is like holding martini glasses and going ha, 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 ha. as he turns sees you goes white starts sweating is clearly having an adrenaline dump <laughs> turns to everybody else is just like oh my goodness i must go to the bathroom and begins <laughs> He's not running, he's power walking mm -hmm. in such a way that he can use the crowd to hide himself from you. And this is definitely Alouette uh, Takeda. I indicate it to, uh, to Hero, just so that he, making sure he catches it. Does he have the sword on him? He is using the sword as a walking stick. Okay, no worries. Not that he doesn't need it as a walking stick, he's using it as a object of status does he appear to have any personal security with him 
No, but you you have been told that if you go after him by Representative Thalia Schultz, that it will be a problem. Yeah. If you mean like, can I go up and kick him in the balls? Yeah, I think you could probably pull that off if you wanted to. I mean, you, you just leave his bloody corpse in the bathroom and walk out with a sword and get on our dropship and fly off. Like, sure, before, that would definitely. You know, like, that would definitely be a pretty severe diplomatic act. Like, yeah, yeah. It would almost maybe. certainly be an act of war. <clears throat> I mean, what's, say, what I does don't war? Think Siegfried would notice him unless anyone anyone pointed him out. Siegfried's probably just enjoying enjoying the party at this point. <laughs> He's just, yeah. I don't know what does war with this planet even entail. They don't seem well, to be. Well, it's not war with the planet. Sure. It's war with the entire Outworlds Alliance. Outworlds uh, Alliance, and we we are looking for ways to try and bring them under the influence of the coordinator once more. They have they have previously been allied with with Karita, and they choose not to be now for similar reasons to this union. Uh, but we want if we can find ways to improve relations, then that's good. Okay. Yeah. I'm scheming. All right, so, I don't. I'm not going after him or anything. I just, you know. Do we have time for a, for a talk amongst ourselves at some point? Yes, but I do want to say, Siegfried, since you are looking at it, the main theme of this party appears to be uh, layered drinks using the specific gravity of different alcohols. Uh, so it's all like two or three colored drinks. And uh, people seem to be indicating what faction they go for locally by their drinks, like... There's the Draconis Combine Black and Red, which appears to be some sort of like black licorice with uh, grenadine underneath it. And then there's the Outworlds Alliances, like, what are they? Green, orange, purple, right? That's their colors. Um, three layered. And then there's there's like two more drinks that you don't really understand like what their color scheme is. One of them might be Lushan Industries Limited based on the part of the logo you just saw while you were there. Uh, and then there's a bunch of people who are just drinking martinis. I think I think for the sake of uh, appearances, I'm going to grab the Outworlds Alliance uh, layered drink. Ooh, okay. I wanna, that, listen, I when the be... waiter comes over with a flight of <clears throat> drinks of the each of the four type, oh, and the martini, so five, you take the Outworlds one, and people nearby are like, ooh, there's a political message in that. Let me gigabrain this. Like, why would he do that? Interesting. Yeah. And I, and I take it and I'll like, if there, if anyone's trying to like cheers or toast or whatever, you know, I'll tap glasses with them and, and sip, start, just start sipping on it. It is horrible. It's literally <laughs> just like pure gin is the first layer. Siegfried is military. He just cares if it has alcohol. It is alcoholic for sure. That's that is all he. Can, that's all that matters. Is there a union drink, and it is it like only White Claw? You might, you might suspect that the fourth drink that you don't know what it is might represent the union, but you have no practical understanding of what that is. I just take the Draconis. I'm, I'm combo sorry. Drink. I just, I just thought that the union drink is nothing but white monsters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's perfect. <laughs> Monster mixed with four locos. Four locos? <laughs> That's a name I haven't heard in some time. I was trying to explain it to somebody not that long ago. An old person. I was like, do you remember that drink they had a while back? What's that Panera supercharge that they have now that's literally like four energy drink shots and like a six ounce? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, you, did, did you have um, Jager bombs? Jager bombs in? Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that well, see, four locos pre predate Jager bombs. They were okay. so dangerous, a, a act of Congress banned them. Yeah. <laughs> College kids were literally dying, like, left and right. Oh, they also died from anger bus, but nowhere near yeah. as bad as Four Loco. Yeah. Their can, hearts I were quick, can I take a quick quick slice for about Congress? Please do. Yeah, okay. I assume you mean the American Congress. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So, I, so I was going through my, my dad's stuff the other day in his storage, and I pulled out a, a record set of a recording uh, from 1938, uh, from a, an artist named Jelly, Jelly Roll Morton, or a jazz recording, and it had the parental advisory explicit content sticker on on the vinyl, like on the on the LP jacket. 
And I thought, I wonder what, you know, I wonder what was so bad. In, I mean, obviously it was published since then, you know, but I wonder what was so bad in there that the, uh, I thought it's probably like casual 1938 racism or something. But I looked it up and apparently this particular recording, uh, which was which was done in 1938, included an interview with the artist where he talked about when he used to work as a, as a piano player, as a child in a brothel in New Orleans. And his stories were so salacious that a group of Christian mothers at the time it was published in the, in the early 40s complained to Congress. And it was this particular recording that was what led Congress to create the parental, uh -huh. like the, the uh, parental advisory warning for music in the first place. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, Perfect, and in fact, that, so many of those songs ended up on the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 soundtrack. <laughs> but that, yeah. but that, the actual, the original recording is now held at the Library of Congress because it's, um, oh, uh, because cool. uh, it was the first thing that triggered that particular act of law. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Christian moms. <laughs> well, uh, Rad, with some observation after you get your drink, you do figure out that the blue and white drink is uh, whole milk over curacao. And it looks like if you wait too long, the milk begins to turn from its direction with the, <laughs> with the blue fruit liqueur. Is anyone drinking it? Yes, they are, but they're drinking it very quickly. <laughs> and then they stand there with the glass, and the glass is all stained from the milk. Is it, is it a slippery nipple that's that's um, Zambuca Galliano over Bailey's Irish cream, and then you leave it too long, the the Bailey's will start to curdle. Oh boy, that's yeah. that's horrible. Yeah, it, it, you end up with cheese in the in the alcoholic that's cheese. Disgusting. <laughs> I am physically starting to want to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to know. Well, I probably should have asked this question earlier. Um. When Kaeda asked about how much is it going to cost you, and he came up with that ten to fifteen million yes. C bills price, that was to hire a local band of ruffians to act as mercenaries and go kill their okay, so way that, into the compound. I want to know more about that faction of ruffians. Wow, fantastic! So, as you say, so... begin asking questions about them, you learn that that band of ruffians are called the Brigade of Exiles and are all noblemen from the Federated Sons and the Draconis Combine who are in exile from their homeland and brought whatever machinery and equipment and retainers they could with them. And they are currently hosting and attempting to get citizenship for one Alouette Lark Decada. Interesting. When you begin to approach some of their members, Alouette has like come back out of the bathroom and is with them and then immediately goes back into the bathroom. To yeah, I want to scare him. I want to go to the people he was associating with and scare him back away so that I could talk to them. That works exactly as you want so, it to. I was going to say first, like when we when we have a chance to talk separately, I was just going to suggest that. And this, this is what I think is probably the most likely suggestion that Hero would come up with. That, that like less, Let's less do that first. Come up with, yeah, yeah. Would be that... Uh, yeah, so it, 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 this is a way of breaking unions would be to to go to the union meeting, draw a line on the ground, the first thousand people that cross that line get 5,000 sea bills. I'm so worried, James. Um, I'm so worried um, by what you're saying yeah, right now. Because the idea is that you, you 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 create enough weight of movement that what's left is not enough to to hold up the hold up the um uh, the strike basically, and that's only going to cost you half what it would cost. It would cost five million sea bills to give a thousand people five thousand sea bills each. Um, so that, that, that that's a very fast way of, of, of breaking it. Like it, it, it tends to delay the problem, but it can delay it quite a while when you're talking about 5,000 C bill bonus on someone who gets 17,000 C bills. So. A lot of money. Yeah. And it, propose... it, it, it causes, it causes a breakdown in, in social interaction because the, the, the people that didn't take the money get in with the people that did take the money. So there's, they're less likely to collaborate against the company in the future i would love for the three of you to play winterhorn with me sometimes i just <laughs> i want to have it happen winterhorn yeah. is a one-shot game where you play a fbi and associated three-letter agency group that is tracking a liberal college group called winterhorn and you are attempting to take actions to break the group up and prevent them from becoming a subversive group but it's not clear at the beginning that they are actually doing anything nefarious 
And the various actions you can take become increasingly horrifying <laughs> as your restrictions are removed. And well, James right now is really is... scaring me. <laughs> this is not how this is not how I would actually tackle yes, the problem. I know, I know. This is you getting unlimited power right now. <laughs> okay, I would like to offer an alternative course of action that is higher risk and higher reward. Um, if we can negotiate with this union faction and simply convince them to go back to work, no questions asked, without issue or problem. In exchange, we can fund a future coup where we can place Draconis Combine loyal individuals at the head of this industrial organization and dethrone their crooked leader, leaving us with financial and industrial influence here on this planet. Uh, an outlier or a question mark to that plan would be this ruffian group that he would use in order to counter this. And I propose we simply offer them more money than he can afford to do so. So that when the time comes, they are loyal to us and not the local government here. I feel like it's pretty easy to say we can offer them more than Alouette can considering, uh, all things go as planned. Alouette will not be long for this world. They'll certainly be more motivated to ally with us than they will anyone else. I want to 1980s Afghanistan the situation and fund the insurgents. I just got so done watching season three <laughs> of The Boys, where they have Soldier Boy being like, I will stand by our Mujahideen brothers. <laughs> oh my God, I'm losing it. <laughs> Yeah. Did we, uh, we we've already unloaded Chadwick Powers, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I was gonna say a we long could... time ago. <laughs> but I feel like we can I can feel like we can destabilize this in our favor. We can right. we can sow for peace now and then set up a, a future scenario where um because we've seen since the moment we stepped up the dropship that this place is absolutely loaded in corruption. Mm -hmm. And my background is experienced in this sort of environment. And I understand that these sort of situations are volatile and they, they offer a lot of danger and uncertainty, but they're also unstable and they can be taken advantage of when there's conflict, like the one that's happening on this planet right now, it's an opportunity point, And that's why the government and the organization and the leadership is so concerned with fixing it as fast as possible because they can't afford this problem and we can afford to fuel it and have the outcome work out in our advantage. I, I think it's worthwhile. I, I think it, you should do it because it's obviously what you're good at. But the only, the only thing I'd say that could go wrong is the fact that if someone were to in the future, make a, a, a show of our lives that the audience would probably want to see a lot more battle mech action. And that, uh, <laughs> yeah, if we, if we resolve this without conflict, we might lose viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. That is a consideration. Listen, <laughs> this is an Oath of Endo still companion show. They could go a long time without. Now they do. They do like one and three, one and four. But uh, to be fair, since James's solo battle, there has that been, has been no the only conflict. combat there's been on this show. <laughs> now, just just to ramp up the tension just a little bit, you get a direct communication with Poe, uh, hero. Yes. Poe calls you and says, I was working on your battle mech, and in the cockpit, I found a sealed file of Draconis Combine military intelligence with, the, with a classified marking for your eyes only and a note on top of it that has been folded up. I didn't put this there. Did you put this there? No, I didn't. The, the, the note's not sealed, though, is it? It is not sealed. Right. Then please read me the note. A favor or a favor. You have asked for a dossier on Nosagi Shiro. Here is what you have asked for. It would be to the interests of the internal security force if this situation was to go the way of the workers. We stand in solidarity with unions everywhere. 
This is from the oh, intelligence force? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Please uh, leave okay. the dossier where it is and make, ensure the mech is locked up and I will come and collect it later on. Thank you. Excellent There's work, one man. more thing. Yes? Our mech bay will be non-operational for the next few hours. A unexpected guest arrived at a pirate point over the city a few minutes ago and is being escorted in as a VIP. Some sort of battle mech salesman. Oh boy. So a, a pirate point is like a, a, a jump point which is not at the... the it is in orbit the of the planet at a yeah. Lagrange point. Uh, yeah. It's usually considered an act of war to arrive there, but it yeah. does cut down on the transit it's, it's, time to the planet no too. Yeah, very short amount of time, and and, and it's harder harder to get exactly right too. Because well, you've... because you have to have the exact time that the rotation of the planet and all of the celestial bodies are in order to get that moment of null gravity. Yeah. Right. So if your right. celestial maps are off even a little bit, or the clocks between two systems aren't correct, you will explode in transit. But at least if you suffer from TDS, it would be over quickly. Yes. I guess. Because <laughs> jumps are instantaneous, aren't they? Like, when, when once you jump, you're instantly there. Technically, by ship's clock, they are instantaneous, despite the fact that in every Battletech fiction, they take a non-negligible amount of time, sometimes seconds, sometimes minutes from the point of view of the viewer. But by a internal clock, of time. it is... Yeah instantaneous yeah okay and i think the scarier and weirder part is that the incoming radiation wave of your arrival starts at before you start charging your drive to make the jump which really makes some weird questions to how time works in BattleTech. <clears throat> you start arriving before you've ever left What do you what do you want to do now? I think Rad was gonna go talk to the Brigade of Exiles. <laughs> hey, oh, he's, he's, back. Back. he's back. He's back. He's back. back. He's back. Rad, do you want to go talk to the Brigade of Exiles now? Sorry, I just had to let the dogs out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you... okay, so wait, we're still in our conversation. Is there anything else I want to say? Oh, okay. So he reads that message. Do you tell us that or no? That um, just comes over the phone to you. I mean, I, I think that um yeah, so so if if I was with you guys when I took that call out afterwards, mm -hmm. it looks like there's some interest from the ISF to have this go favorably for the workers. At this point, do we know you're a member of the ISF? <laughs> you do I was now. about to ask that same question. <laughs> uh, okay. It you has get never the, you come get... up, I think, but you definitely know now. You get the big eyebrows from me, but um, I don't say anything about it right now, right here in a, in a public I forum. Think... I think Siegfried's like mid sip and put, like spits it back into the <laughs> sip. <laughs> says, come again. <laughs> That is interesting. <laughs> um, we'll. I'll, I, mm. Now, just know, two of you don't take orders from the ISF. They're not in right. your chain of command. You're nobles. As long as you don't do anything treasonous, they probably won't execute you. Right. That would be like if my wife came home from vacation and she was like, you know, the CIA would really prefer it if we took a cruise next year as well. <laughs> Is that something you think feasibly will happen? No. Okay. Yeah, but it, but it, it does, like, it, it, it would give you a moment to pause. Okay, well, if I don't do what they want, what will the CIA do? Yeah, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> it's I don't work are for you them. implying your wife works for <laughs> right. the CIA? I don't, right I don't have any associate with the CIA, but I do a little bit care about how they can affect my life. <laughs> I thought they couldn't operate domestically. <laughs> I don't know what I think about what the CIA can and can't do. Um, okay. We'll unpack that later. There's a lot to be said about that. Um, I'm going to go. So what's, do we have a consensus here? Uh, what do you think, Lord Arnson? Uh, I think if uh, the ISF and assuming they, they have the best interests of the dragon at heart, uh, we should probably go with, with their recommendation. We should decide with the union. 
but I do like I do like your initial idea of telling them to go back to work and we'll we'll fund someone to kind of like usurp the com uh, company for them. Um, yeah. So that just leaves us with uh, extraditing Alouette. Um, so I'm going to go talk to the people who are currently protecting him and uh, get a get a feel for what that situation is. If either does, one of you want to come with me, does he keep hiding uh, in the actually, bathroom? I assume at this point, he while we're hiding. all talking, he's with them, right? And then yeah. when we when you away, approach, he leaves yeah, to go to the he bathroom. Dips. Yeah, right. yes. yeah, yeah. This is a flashback. Excuse me, I need to go powder my nose. <laughs> oh yeah, all right. Um, but uh, I have a I have a different line of inquiry I want to follow that might okay. help with working something out. So I'll, I'll go make some other inquiries so you do that. Okay. So are the two of you approaching the Brigade of Exiles, or is it just Akari? The the two of us are approaching, and then okay. Arnson's going to slip yep. away to intercept in the restroom. Yep. A man with Chinese ancestry who is shorter than the rest of his fellows steps forward and holds out a hand. He's wearing like uh, almost like a Mandarin's coat. Something very Han influence, but with the future cyber 80s to it. It's probably got a little bit of technology woven into it, like glowing wristbands or something like that. He's got, he's got the RGB. Yeah, he's got some RGB going on. <laughs> okay. um, he holds out his hand and says, I am Mandarin Wan of the Helen Confederation, I'll formerly of the a handshake. What's it called now? Uh, the St. Ives Compact. I was forced out of my rightful position and made my way here. I am the leader of the Brigade of Exiles. I believe, after he shakes your hand, I believe you might be Akari Genji. I am, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Ah, welcome, my lady. Is this guy Fed Sons, or is he... He is Capellan Confederation, which, oh, is, Capellan. Okay. which is the enemy of the Federated Sons. And he comes from an area... Of the Capellan Confederation, the St. Ives Compact, that used to belong to the Capellans, and then they defected, and all of the loyal Capellans were basically like, well, where are we going to live now? Now that our political leadership is fucking the Federated Sons Intelligence Director, and decided to, look. it was absolutely crazy. It was like, okay, the leader, the heir of the Capellan throne is having a child with the head of military intelligence, and has defected, where do we go? Where do we go with that? And so this guy fled here. Okay. So I was like, yeah, uh, I understand you lead a an eclectic group of misfits and excommunicates. Can I, can I throw one thing out to you, Rad, just quickly out of character as well? Sure. Not sure if it's relevant, but the even though it was marked Davian, the particular variant of mech which attacked my house was a St. Ives so I um, created mech. And also, your particular mech comes from the St. Ives Compact, your rattlesnake. Oh, okay. Would that be, would any of this information click as specific relevance to Akari? Mm, maybe. I mean, this guy, you know, he's an exile. He probably has not been there in many years. Like this, okay. But so... there's a lot more Capellan stuff going on around you right now than you would assume for something so distant from your homeland. So it's a little, it's a little warmer a little than coincidence. Odd. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll file that away. So yeah. Yeah, I understand uh, you lead an eclectic group here on planet. One of the members steps forward. He shakes Arnold's hand before he, or he shakes uh, Arneson's hand before he shakes. Arneson's not here. Hand. Uh, okay, yeah. Oh. No, no. Um, he, went to, he went to the bathroom. Oh, he went to the bathroom? Yes, yeah, Siegfried. Yeah. Siegfried Arneson is with you. Uh, he steps forward and he shakes Siegfried's, Siegfried's hand. Siegfried's in the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, I, went, I, thought... I followed I followed Alouette to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. and then... Siegfried's in sorry, the bathroom. I got Kaeda's confused with Kaeda's with you. Okay, so yeah, he yeah. shakes no, 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 no. I was, was going to go pursue a different line of inquiry. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 th <laughs> Everyone I thought the two of you... Place. We, we yeah, I, thought, I, thought, I thought the two of you were walking towards him and then as soon as... As soon as Alouette split off, that Siegfried split off to follow him. I did not so get that's... Siegfried splitting off to go there. Okay. Yeah. We'll yes. cover that in its own <laughs> circumstance in a minute. Man steps forward and says, name's Campus, Bill Campus. I shake his hand too. Okay. 
the Wait, rest of the group. Now I'm just... confused. It is me, my my character, and you James are alone characters. meeting with the... five members I'm of alone. the Brigade of Exiles. Yeah. Where's yes. James? I'm. I he said he was going to pursue inquiry. a different alternative line. Oh, he's doing a, a totally separate thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, that worries me. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's take his hand too. The rest of the group introduced themselves as uh, Tony Ash, Met Arnold, and Elizabeth July. Uh, and they all appear to have some sort of connection to either Draconis Combine or Federated Sons in some way. And they all also appear to be mech warriors, given the fact that they have either spurs on their boots or some sort of collar indicator. For instance, uh, Tony Ash has two swords on his collar that indicates he, at one point, was a Draconis Combine mech warrior. How many people are here? How many people introduced themselves? There are five members of the Brigade of five Exiles. Five total, to, including their leader. Yes. Okay. So I see you've... Uh, how, well, how do, I, how do you find your uh, stay on planet here? How long have you all been here? So Wang just says, I've been here for 15, 20 years, perhaps, ever since the fall of my homeland, surely. It's been rough since 29 so not a great war not a great war. you've you've been described to me as a group of ruffians but surely you're more industrious than that what have you uh what have you and your companions been up to for the last 20 plus years well this soiree of nobility that we have we're sort of emigre in exile that carry out Things the local governments of the Outworlds Alliance don't want their people knowing about. There are not many mech pilots, and there are not many machines within the Outworlds Alliance. Problems require a violent solution from time to time. Populace needs to be maintained in its compliance. And we are the hammer that is the solution to those problems. So they out of character. They call a mech warrior without a mech. Is that dispossessed? Is that yes. the right word? Mm -hmm. So what's yeah. the opposite of that? Like, how do I ask these guys? Oh, you all have your own mechs. Uh, is there a word operator. for that, or do I just ask it like that? Owner operator is the name of someone who owns their own machine. Okay. So all of you are owner operators then. Mister Wang kind of makes a very sour face. The rest of them all like nod or cross their arms to indicate like yes and tony ash kind of snickers towards mr wang is just like <laughs> so not all of you are owner operators i currently find myself without a mech at this time but just before i came into the party it was my understanding that melvin mason the discount mech dealer has finally arrived on planet we've been expecting him for some time Oh, so this is a issue you're in a position to solve? I've been setting aside brigade funds to solve this particular issue, as you would call it. I hope well, to be back in a machine before tomorrow morning. I'm, uh, I'm very familiar with the situation you've all found yourselves in here in this stage in your lives. Are and, you now? uh, I do I do wish you the best Just in be your clear, future endeavors. You're, you're like half the age of everyone here. <laughs> right. Yeah. But um I know that you can also appreciate plain talk. And from mech warrior to mech warrior, I know that, you know, there's not much patience for min minced words. So I'm curious what your interest in Alouette is. Surely you've pieced together here that we're here for him. We would prefer that you not take him. And, it and would why seem... is that? <laughs> what, does, what has he offered you that the three of us could not? I feel like I get this in-character poignant pause just as the out-of-character one. And it's not, <laughs> it's not even a pause. This has become a hostile situation. Like... This went from, like, friendly conversation to there is a possibility they're going to murder you in the next five seconds in the middle of your own party. Mm -hmm. Like, the, 
but the the vibe and energy has changed extremely suddenly where you're like okay what can you offer us that he can't and they're like mm, might be might be time to kill you okay i'm, I'm just waiting She's nerves of steel, right? Okay. Like, if there was any nervousness, she would not show it. Mr. Wang kind of makes a gesture for everyone to calm down for a second. Alouette is an extremely charming and roguish young man who we'd like to see among our ranks. Maybe even get him some mech warrior training. But he's certainly a capable armsman and a proficient duelist. The things that he provides to us are outside of his abilities of combat. Things that I doubt that you're willing to trade with. I think that's a bold assumption. I don't feel I need to discuss too much any further about him, but I assure you, from what I've heard from him, he is a man who is much more for sale than you are. I'll take half a step closer to him. All right. Say, so you're taller than I him. I assure you. But the yet. two of you, you know, you got the pit bull coming up at you. Right. Now. I step. I when I step forward, I take another sip of my drink. <laughs> and I say, I can assure you, I'm for sale. You can buy me anytime. <laughs> he will no longer be a resource for you within the next forty. Within the next seventy-two hours. I look forward to seeing how you accomplish that. Well, it will be unfortunate because the deals and opportunities I'll be willing to offer you afterwards might not be as lucrative as they would be now. Now you get to make a roll. Because now <laughs> you've finally offered something of value to these people. I will take another persuasion uh charisma roll and it has roughly been an hour plus or minus 10 minutes since the last time you I'll just keep pressing R until it's been an hour roll <laughs> fucking dice rad okay so that's 9 plus 1 is 10 okay I feel like that's probably I should just I should stay he should grabs what I got. a uh Draconis Combine gravity drink. So the black, uh, like, um, licorice liqueur and grenadine. He steps from it and he goes, Oh, that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> all the drinks are terrible. They've all I feel sacrificed. like I really made it clear the yes. drinks are quite bad. <laughs> They've all sacrificed taste for, you know, looks. <laughs> and he. Drills down and, and has like a quick head count with everybody. And he turns back to you and says, Alouette has been providing me with technical details on some of the most recent Draconis Combine military innovations. If you are willing to match or exceed his offer, I will see to it that his claims of diplomatic... Mm. his untouchable status will be removed and you can take him home with you. He is quite an entertaining fellow, but we could do without him if you bring us what we need, the information on hunter-killer systems and the relevant ECM technology to defeat them. So out of character, what exact is he asking for ways to attack the Draconis Combine? No. So in the most recent War of 3039, House Davian invented a new type of missile that hadn't invented is pretty loose but you know missiles don't really have tracking systems in battle tech because the it's assumed that battle mechs have an extremely strong ecm system that will defeat that house davian basically hacker mans a lock-on system called hunter killer uh, and within a year the draconis combine came up with a counter for it that disabled it so while davians enjoyed a extremely swelling success at the beginning of the campaign they had to use custom printed missiles with special firing systems and all of that junk. And by the end of the war, it was totally worthless. And they had spent huge amounts of money on something that was basically stopped instantly now by a simple software upgrade to most modern uh, ECM systems. However, I would point out the periphery has none of that technology. Unleashing it out here 
could mean, you know, that ECM system is a perfect shield, and that missile system would be absolutely wild out here. Like, and that's what he wants. He wants both the shield and the and, missile system. Yes, it would be a big deal for him. Okay. I mean, but it, it would basically make him one of the premier arms traders in the region. But it wouldn't pose any threat to us, really, right? Because mm, I mean, you already have the system to defeat it, sure. Right. Okay. Um, is that a resource I can provide him? You would probably need to use the HPG to call home and get that sort of technical details. And, you know, it's military secrets. You're probably going to have to get it from someone pretty significant. You know, this is like a big ask, a big favor from someone. He's okay. I'd be do okay. I'd be asking for a big favor in order right. to accomplish this. Okay. Now, some of your friends have people that owe them big favors. Right. Um, I say, this could be the beginning of a long-term lucrative relationship. It sounds like you have 72 hours to figure that out based on your own boasting. He gives you a, you know, a cheers with the Draconis Combine drink. He takes another sip from it and goes, no. I'll cheers him. I'll cheers him with like a me. smirk. Mm -mm. I don't <laughs> like licorice. I cheers him with a smirk and I down the whole glass. Wow. Okay. <laughs> he looks impressed and disgusted at the same time. <laughs> I assume there's a German word for that. <laughs> yeah. Let's cut to Siegfried in the bathroom. <laughs> with a complete lack of etiquette. Alouette Takeda is actually pissing, uh, but he's also humming while he's doing it. He's like, mm -hmm, uh, 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 uh. he sees you come in. He turns slightly and begins pissing onto the wall. <laughs> and on, on the, the guy floor. next to him that's also pissing? No, no. Okay. Oh, listen, that's the worst etiquette is standing next to somebody else who's that's pissing true. in a line Bunch of, of toilets. Listen, urinal, I just, okay, next hold on, hold on. Before, when I come in, can I try to come in like quiet, like he doesn't see me come in? Uh, into a bathroom? Yeah. I but, guess. I mean, okay. all right, let's who, roll how stealth. Often, how often do you turn to look to see who comes into the bathroom? Never. But I feel like being <laughs> stealthy big... while opening a bathroom door, you know, they're normally not very well oiled. Let's let's make the roll. Make Turning the roll. from the urinal and locking eyes with someone walking in the door is a big brooch of <laughs> male restroom <laughs> etiquette. That's a, that's a huge brooch of etiquette. Yeah, that's, that's a social four part hard to recover from. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do right. this. Let's stealth do this. wisdom. You got uh, seven. Do you have any stealth seven. training? Uh, probably not. Hold What's on. your wisdom? Uh, yeah, no stealth and <laughs> no bonus to wisdom. So <laughs> you mean you're not seven. trained in covert restroom entry? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have a six. DCMS was a little lax on, on covert knowledge restroom, restroom etiquette. etiquette. He got right. a. Uh, he has a minus one on his wisdom. Oh, it should surprise no one. But he uh, is trained in perception, so he has a nine total. He turns and locks... Eye or no, sorry, he has a plus zero to that. So he has an eight, which definitely beats your six. He turns and locks eyes with you as you try to sneak around the corner of the bathroom. He's just like, you, what are you doing here? As again, he's pissing on the wall. Of a fancy, of a fancy bathroom, you know? Like, the grout in here is regularly checked and scraped. Uh, and then he swivels back. <laughs> He's got one hand on the sword now, which he just pissed on. Oh, God. Kaeda would have immediately behead him. <laughs> right. I'm like, do I, do I just want to kill him here? But I don't think that's necessarily what, uh, what I want to do. Um, I kind of want to embarrass him. Uh, so... He's he's still like facing the urinal, right? Yeah. Even though he's got one hand on the sword. Yeah. And the other hand on his dick, presumably. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think I just I'm like... really crossing a lot of rule one here, but I did not decide <laughs> you to put face him in this the bathroom, guy off in the bathroom. Oh, my apologies for having a guy hide in the bathroom. Jesus. <laughs> at least it's not two characters rage yeah. shitting at each other. <laughs> that is one of my favorite scenes, though. <laughs> It's what a horse person would do, Red. It's what a horse person would do. I appreciate your dedication to the role play, Arthur. I really do. Yeah, I'll even break my own rules for it. Okay, you tell me whatever <laughs> sick, twisted, perverted plot you have to embarrass this man who just peed on his own sword scabbard. Uh, 
I think Siegfried's going to like grab the back of his head and bash it into the tile, and okay. then he's going to try to f- try to force his head into the into the urinal that he's currently pissing in. Yes, this will absolutely be a roll for sure. Uh, oh, obviously, yeah. I, I... I wouldn't expect. I wouldn't have expected it not to be. <sighs> Is brawling I'm, a thing? I, in I'm this? gonna assume he's gonna have some kind of disadvantage because he he does currently have, uh, like. Okay. I mean, I, I can't. I can't imagine trying to defend from the position he's in. Yeah. Yes, but I have yeah. to tell you, while he is physically incapable of stopping the piss from flowing, if you approach him and look like you're going to slam his head into the wall, he will defend himself in the manner that he was required to, even if he has to continue pissing. That's well, just how try. fluid dynamics works. Uh, el- Ladies, I apologize. This has gotten incredibly <laughs> gross and grotesque and is about to get much worse. Yep. Okay, so this is a combat unarmed roll off. You're using your strength and your combat unarmed skill. Um, actually, can I. Hmm. <laughs> I was gonna say, I wonder if I could take my take my sword and just try to club him in the back of the head with my, one of my swords. Did you bring your sword to this party? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I would have. Yeah, I, I didn't think we left them anywhere. And okay. I've, I've well, much now them with me everywhere. Now you're making a primitive versus primitive roll as he's going to try to block your sword with his sword, while, rather than while you holding... just bash his okay. head into a wall and then okay. force his head into a toilet. <laughs> Okay. Yes, he is one-handing his sword in order to fend off your blow and parry it. Roll your okay. dice, sir, with your strength added and your combat primitive. I hope uh, that you're good at combat primitive, because he actually I have, is. I have plus two to combat primitive, and okay, I have we'll... a two in combat primitive, and I have a one in strength. Okay. So that's a plus two total. He also has a plus two total. He rolled a seven plus two for nine, and you rolled... I got a seven plus two. You are perfectly matched. (laughs) He remains pissing, torso half twisted, blocks your blade, and then parries several more blows as you end up in a blade lock, the two of you forcing your swords against each other. And he snarls at you and says, this is incredibly disgusting. I cannot believe you would do this. Attacking a man in this manner? It will be war, sir. Why would you dishonor your house this way, Siegfried Arneson? And also, help! <laughs> Someone help! I'm being assassinated! <laughs> James, oh, let's man. cut to you real quick. <laughs> okay, no worries. <laughs> um, I was looking to try and like have a group conversation with just some random people. Try and include the representative. If she, if she's here, is she as well? Representative Thalia Schutz. Yes. Yes, she is here. Yes, but I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to be in a group with. Um, Holtz. I'm hoping that Holtz is somewhere else. Uh, okay, that's great, Disney because Holtz is a deeply unpopular man. Okay. <laughs> ah, yeah. Why would that surprise any of you? <laughs> <laughs> um, He's the only one drinking his colored drink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he can afford to buy everyone here, so yeah. he doesn't have to be nice. So I, I guess we'll come in mid-conversation saying, so that's what I say, I've been working on restoring this blackjack, and Although it wasn't part of my original reason for coming here, I thought that with Lushan's medium lasers being manufactured, maybe I could buy some replacement parts there. But I obviously have to wait until the the arbitration. I don't. I don't want to be uh, appear to be biased towards the company I, I wish to buy some things from. In fact, I wonder. So, is there any opportunity for investment in Lushan and Lushan in the industry? So. A nearby man who's got the soul patch is like stroking yeah. the soul. He's like, yeah, Gross. man, there's definitely plenty of opportunity for it. A ton of investors from the Draconis Combine actually fund Lushan Industrials Limited. They get into like IPOs and stuff, a lot of returns. I mean, Falco Holtz is a visionary, man. And you can see Thalia is like, Yes, what this man's saying is true. I'm annoyed with him, but yes. Should not say the annoyed part out loud, but you could tell it. How old is this Mr. Holtz? Oh, yeah, Mr. Holtz is like, what, in his 50s now? Unmarried. They say that he's the most eligible bachelor on planet. But he has, so what what would happen, though? Like, so, so if he, you know, God forbid something happened to him, what would be, what would happen with the company? 
one of the women nearby is like, oh my goodness, no one can ever say anything about that. His will is kept in a safe, ironclad. Who knows, as he is the sole proprietor of the industries. Mm, well, I It mean, is the I, talk I, of the town at some length. <laughs> interesting. I mean, that's that's going to be a, a pretty big risk, not just for for the for the well, but for the alliance. When you know, such a major manufacturing concern, there's no key. There's no clear indication of what would happen past its founders. Um, well, but their, what their will is. I mean, all I can say is in the Dracos Combine, that sort of organization would be nationalized pretty quickly in order to provide security and safety for for the Combine and its people. So Thalia says. I understand where you come from has that sort of heavy handedness, but as a democracy, we would never nationalize a defense in. <laughs> Sorry, no, I can't even this. say it. <laughs> <laughs> we would never nationalize a privately owned corporate defense industry without some very serious problems going on. I am not aware of Mr. Holtz's future plans in case of his death, but. I assume the company cannot simply dissolve. And in the case that there is no owner, perhaps what you say could be enacted. Well, I mean, yeah, if he as had, a if he private had no, citizen, if, we would never make such a decision for him. Yeah, but if he, what I was saying is if he had no heir, then like if, if, he, if his will didn't actually leave the company to someone, then I imagine that the state would claim it anyway, right? It would have to. I mean, otherwise, other, uh, it's, it's either wind it up or... Or find someone else to take it, take it over. That would be well, a question it to somebody in his will. Executive Parliament. Mm -hmm. I would need to consult with specialists in that particular. Well, I mean, field I, of I, law. Let's, hope, let's hope it never comes to any case. Well, all things die eventually. Mm. But yes, let's hope that the situation resolves itself before Mister Holtz's untimely demise. At this point, you begin hearing someone shout, help, help, I'm being assassinated. Actually, AP, I wanted to ask a question. <sighs> he, when he looks like he's going to call for help, I want to try something, but it's kind of gross. Oh, my God. When I, when what, I no, see no, no, no. What if you don't tell me and you just roll, okay? Can we... <laughs> And then if you succeed, we'll some... just say something gross happens and he's not able to call for help. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> like, we're really pushing some fucking boundaries this it. episode. Let's see what these dice come up with. It's going to be bad. <laughs> no, the problem is, is that it's good. You rolled pretty damn high. Oh, All right. I, would expect a I would like full... you to send me on Discord what your plan is. Yeah, he's, he can't talk. His mouth is full. Oh God! Oh boy! God. Dave, please, <laughs> please! I'm trying the to children. run a reputable channel. Got you. We're so far past the line. <laughs> by the way, as in, as implied by the appearance of Melvin Mason, Hondo will be our guest star next week. Nice. We're gonna there be doing go. some mech shopping. Oh my god. This is like horrific. Okay, yes. <laughs> All right, James, we cut back to you. There's no shout. Okay. <laughs> I mean look, I, I think that I, I, I got out the part that I wanted to get anyway. I was I was just trying to, to lead into the concept of uh because it seems this guy is a lot was a large part of the problem. Wow, that's crazy. You're telling me the Super controlling industrialist who's having problems with the union is part of the problem. <laughs> and from his point of view, I'm sure that he believes the union is the problem. Wow. Wild. Absolutely wild. We're telling new stories here. Uh, okay. The two of you are still locked in mortal peril in the bathroom. If Alouette leaves this room, he can very feasibly say you tried to assassinate him. How do you intend to stop him from fleeing right now with his dick out? Oh, man. I didn't think of an exit strategy before I started this. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow, oh, man. I'll tell you what. What if we call it here and you have a whole fucking <laughs> week to decide what you're going to do in the next five seconds that will keep you from being arrested and diplomatically expelled 
and cause all kinds of problems for the Draconis Combine. Would a week of thinking give you enough time to get yourself out of this problem? I honestly thought it was about just giving him a threat, saying he's got like 72 hours and then backing out. Okay, if you want to do that, right now is a great time to do it. <laughs> You've pretty much threatened him, including the thing you did off camera is extremely <laughs> scary. <laughs> yeah, right. So like yeah. your combat role was evenly matched and you've mm -hmm. successfully silenced him. So at this point... Yeah, right. I think thematically I think you point, should be able like, to back up and sheath your sword without him cutting you or anything like that because you're even, <laughs> right? Right. And then, and then just back up and just be like, you got 72 hours. Like and you've then been warned. Out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Water tribe out. <laughs> Clean yourself. Yeah. What? <laughs> Clean yourself up. Clean yourself up. Oh, God. Yourself you throw up. a towel at him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you pull did, one of the paper towels sword. out of the dispenser and throw it at him. You disgust me. That still does not stop the problem that you did attack this man in a bathroom. What proof does he have? It's his word versus mine. Okay, well, you're right. And who looks more presentable? pissed on his own sword, so... <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, are you going to trust the guy who peed on himself, or are you going to trust the guy who's... <laughs> no, no, no. You had, let me be very clear. Didn't pee on himself yet. Did pee yeah. on his sword sheath. Night's young. This really got away from you, didn't it? Arthur? Oh, yeah, yeah. so far. <laughs> so far away from me. Brad, you did ask me for a more comedic experience. I hope you got everything that you wanted and everything you deserved. Uh, well, yes. Not the episode we deserve, but the one we... Oh, yeah, well, definitely not goes. the episode yeah. you wanted. Not the one we needed, but the one we deserved. I'm going to give everybody 500 XP for this episode. Hell yeah. We should probably have talked about goals, but none of your goals are pertinent to this particular mission right now. Well, so. all of my goals, I have a bunch of goals now that have arised out of this session. Great. Know that next episode will involve negotiations for purchasing a mech and that each of you will be allotted an amount of points towards a mech's purchase based on a business role or bureaucracy role that we do at the beginning of the episode. And then you'll be bidding against the Brigade of Exiles for those mix. Wait, say that again. Okay. At the beginning of the next episode, you will be yes. making roles like we'll business or bureaucracy how much we have. to see how much currency you have. And then uh -huh. you'll be bidding that against the Brigade of Exiles, who are the gentleman and lady that you just met, to buy Max from Ponder the Mad. Interesting. Okay, I will tell you, you can tell me how this would work. Um, my plan was to offer to supplement the, what was his name? Not Bill. Who's the leader? What's the leader's name? Frederick Wong. Frederick to to subsidize Frederick to let him get an even better mech for himself than he otherwise would have. Well, then that'll be very easy to help him bid if you give him more money. Right, like... W worse for us, we end up finding them. Right, I'm trying to team up with this homie. I'm not trying to, like, compete with him. Like, I guess what I'm asking is, there's you can't, like... We can't both get a mech, right? Like... We bid against each other. So either he gets one or I get one kind of situation. I mean, the three of you and the five of them will each have a separate pool. I mean, you can smush your pools together and in between your groups or, you know, internally and inside the Blade of Honor if you, you know, want to jointly buy a mech. That, well, that's like, I guess I need to have a conversation with uh, Siegfried about like, hey, what? What are what are our options for Let's, like? Cons maybe we'll see the mech catalog that Pondo will make, and then. Why well, I, I mean, like separate uh, from like what mechs are available, but like, can we conscript these guys and make them a mercenary unit on our payroll? Right, because he because Siegfried's our mercenary. Some of these people awesome. are in exile from the Draconis Combine. Because because Pondo could have great mechs, but we've got no mech pilots. Right, you have right. Yeah, That's true. Well, he hasn't said yes yet. 
I'm I just mean, saying, like, you hand him a mech, he'll probably say yes. <laughs> does being an exile preclude you from like being a contractually like viable mercenary? I mean, it depends on what you're exiled for. You know, if you're wanted for death where you came from, that would be very difficult. Well, we're not exactly like asking them to operate within the Draconis Combine. That is true. For now, right? Like all true. I'm just saying these guys could be turned into an asset. Maybe not an asset for any one of us individually, but an asset like for the Blades of Honor, right? Sure. So, for the record, I am considering possible one possible way to solve this problem with the company is to just mur straight up murder Werner Herzog. And, yeah, well, um, I did, yeah. I, there's no way yeah. I anticipated that based on your extremely specific <laughs> questioning. Right. I'm considering the same thing and then propping up Frederick Wang or somebody of the like to, or, well, or, you it, know. Well, it would, it would seem that the, the, the most, vi like if there was no one else, the most viable person around the company would be the union leader because he was yeah. already cited to be a, a, a middle manager before this whole thing went to shit. Gustav, right? Or Gustavo? Gustavo Coimbra. Yeah. And we still haven't had a chance to talk to him. He hadn't even arrived yet. There was I mean. so much piss in this episode <laughs> that we didn't even get to that. Well, there's so, so much drinking going on, so, you know. Oh, you God. Know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I Once guess you break the seal. Flu flu yeah. Fluids in, fluids out, Arthur. Right. <sighs> okay. Thanks, Hydro homies. <laughs> So yeah, uh, that that would be like one of my goals would be ally myself, ally ourselves with this potential mercenary group, um, de depose her, you know, hurts and put our own puppet ruler there and secure like basically exclusive distribution for House Genji for all of the materials from this industry into the Draconis uh, Combine. There it is. There yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. So the like Radosaurus specific bent to mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yes. And that's, she's keeping that one close to the chest until the end. Right. Yes. Where like she, she's going to want a very lucrative beneficial deal for like, to be able to ship this stuff in for house Genji. So the one thing I think that you haven't considered, I guess it's been implied a little bit, but I want to make sure that your characters if maybe if your characters don't understand it that your players do, uh, the governments of the Outworlds Alliance's individual planets maintain order by force of arms, and this particular planet doesn't have that many battle mechs. So the force of arms maintenance is subcontracted out to these people, but they aren't an official mercenary unit because what they're doing would then be on a record with Comstar. You know what I mean? Like suppress the population by murdering a bunch of dissidents doesn't look great to be like, hey, I got this contract that, you know, like I was looking through city hall files. It turns out we've been killing our own citizens for the last hundred years. Which is why they're not a mercenary group, right? And that's why like what a, they do is off the record. They're yes. a shadow group. Okay. Well, that's fine, but they could be a shadow group for us. Yes. I just want to make sure you understand that their job is okay. normally to just beat the crap out of peasants by machine gunning them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Are we good for next week? I have a new calendar thing. Oh, I, I think I yeah, say, you told no, me earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not good for next week. I'm going to make, make a state agent at my mother's house to help sell it. So it could be up to two weeks. Oh, you told me that today, and I forgot to reschedule with Pondo. I better do that now. <laughs> well, James is not good for next week. I'm. I may not be good for the following. Right, I think I mentioned that last time that the ah, twenty eighth was true. kind of a fifty fifty question mark for me, because that'll be three days before I fly out. Okay. When will be the next time that we are good then? Well, let's see. For me, after that, it won't be the till the eighteenth. So we got rad question mark on the twenty eighth. Question mark on the twenty eighth out for sure four and eleven, and then back on the eighteenth. I can try and reschedule the estate agent if you if if like it's going to be like next week or nothing for a month, and I can try and reschedule that. I mean. Pondo is available at this time. It's not like a critical. That's right. Pondo don't got shit to do. Wow. Okay. He does. You heard me, Pondo. Don't, no, don't do this. <laughs> I'm not in a rush. It's not like he has a small child to take care of or anything like two, that. Two, two children. Two small children gun. to take care of. 
Well, you know, the first one's old enough. It just runs around naked at this point, probably. It doesn't really need to be taken care of. Is that how children work? That's how my children work. I don't know about you. Okay, well. <laughs> did, I, did I tell you, Rad, I got to the point of like, uh, the week where I actually managed to go out with my wife and like leave the oldest kid looking after the two younger kids? Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's like it was a turning point in our lives. That's a big That's a big step, man. I'm not there yet. We, we can leave them by themselves for like an hour or two during the day yeah. right like but we would not we don't do like an evening thing not yet we're not there yet soon but not there not yet because yeah. how how old is your youngest uh youngest is eight eldest is 12. okay yeah you're right there we're right there mine are a little bit older but i don't know their executive function <laughs> isn't <laughs> quite as high as your kids <laughs> It's mostly just that my nine-year-old is uncontrollable from the adults in the house, let alone a 13-year-old. So, <laughs> All right. Did you already end it, Arthur? Is everybody no, still here with us? No, I haven't ended it yet. Listening to our personal business. <laughs> People love that personal of us. business shit they from do you, love that personal business shit. They live their lives waiting for another story from you. Uh I was thinking I think... back through some old Arthur shows and I came across a comment on the first episode of Cyberpunk 2020 plus plus that I joined. But they're like, oh, you know, I'm really going to enjoy seeing, you know, James's deadpan, unhumorous way of talking. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I don't remember that comment. What an insult. We still need to all pick an episode where we try to talk as fast as we can just to oh, fuck with Daenerys? everybody who tries to... Yeah, just because yeah, yeah. he tries to watch it on two times or whatever. So it just needs one person to talk really fast so that it sounds completely incomprehensible yeah. to him. ruins everybody's experience. Back to normal speed. <laughs> yeah. My God, I don't know that I can keep up with this speed. I can barely talk at a normal speed without messing up. <laughs> What's the line for Princess Bride? Never go in against a Sicilian with <laughs> Is on the line. Yeah, never get in a land war with Asia. Oh, he's slightly muscle known as this. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. If there's no other comments or incredibly fast talk in order to confuse Junamis, <laughs> we will be back maybe in two weeks, maybe in five weeks. I guess we'll find out. At that time, Pondo may or may not be with us. If he isn't, I guess we're going to meet Gustavo Coimbra, <laughs> a man who has been quickly tailored okay. into a suit. <laughs> we love you, Pondo. I mean, you for it's okay. Being flexible and patient. <laughs>